Hot diggity damn, it's already that time again. Clash of Clans is now nine years old. Holy crap. As a tradition, every year we take a look at the history of the game starting from its launch all the way to present day. Fair warning though, I started making these videos four years ago and honestly, after years of talking about more or less the same exact thing, well, the scripts are very identical. There's only so much you can change to make a video different, so uh, yeah. Also, one more thing, we're gonna be going over every single update, but of course, we're gonna be skipping through the less important stuff. So if you see me skip a season or some balance changes and whatnots, well, now you know. To mention everything would just be an incredibly long video, so. Yeah. If you've watched last year's video, you can skip to this part to continue where we left off. Or if you want to stick around for the entire video, well, sit back, relax, and let's get right into it. Let's do this. August 2nd, 2012, Clash of Clans was globally released on iOS. The game was different, to say the least. The max Town Hall was Town Hall 8, the graphics were okay for 2012, and overall it looked like a nice entry for the time. People were very excited to try this game out in 2012. It just looked like nothing else on the iPhone. A few weeks later, on the 30th of August, in the first ever update, we were introduced to some cool new goodies. The Tesla, the new decorations and graphical improvements, and, you know, the usual balances. September 18, spells were finally added into the game, but at the time, it was only three spells. So we had the Lightning, Heal, and Rage spell. Replays were also added to battles, so you can now watch them over. A new building, the Wizard Tower, and the time to build walls was removed. Yes, before this, walls took time to build, which is incredibly weird to think of today, but uh, yeah. October 15, the ability to add a message when kicking someone was added, and also a clan trophy requirement. Two weeks later, on October 27, the first seasonal update dropped for Halloween. But that wasn't everything because Town Hall 9 was now the highest Town Hall in the game. It's also my favorite Town Hall. I, I just love the colors. We got a lot of new stuff like the Expo, a jump spell. This was also the update in which Supercell removed the ability to sell buildings. It was a nice feature, but it didn't last long. People were selling too many buildings that were essential to your base. And it also didn't make a whole lot of sense. November 19 was the first winter update and the village was covered in snow for the first time ever. Also the first Christmas tree was added and a sand spell. And also the ability to boost buildings such as the spell factory and collectors were finally added. The first update of 2013 on January 10th, this was one of the biggest updates in history because heroes were added which at the time was a huge deal. We got the Barbarian King and the Queen and along with all this we also had the introduction to Dark Elixir because Obviously, if you have heroes, then you need Dark Elixir, and we also got the storage and a drill. The 5th of February, we got two new traps, the Air Bomb and the Seeking Air Mine. Moving over to March 12, Dark Elixir troops were introduced, which was the Minion, Hog Rider, Valkyrie, and of course, the Barracks to train those troops. About a month later, on April 17th, leagues were added into the game because, well, before this, everyone was just in the same league, which was... None. Also, there was a new Dark Elixir troop, the Golem. Godly. Moving on, May 23rd, Town Hall 10 was introduced. We got to see new stuff like the Inferno Tower. I mean, this update was huge. You got the usual stuff you get with a new Town Hall. New levels, balance changes, and quality of life improvements. The 17th of June, a new spell was added called the Freeze. Just about a week after that as well, an extra mining pump was added to Town Hall 10. July 28th, we got a new Dark Elixir troop, the Witch. We also got the chance to now share replays to the clan chat, and the ability to mute players in global. August 2nd, Clash of Clans was finally available for Android for their one year anniversary. We also got a rework to the player profile, new levels for troops and spells, and most importantly, graphical changes that made the game look a whole lot better. September 30 was a very important part of the history of Clash of Clans. Village edit mode was added, meaning now you didn't have to move everything around to try and make a base. So making a base was now an easier and much faster experience. November 6, we could now upgrade traps. Previously, traps were just traps. They had no levels, but in this update, 
that changed. Also, spells were updated to cost elixir instead of gold. December 5, the last update of 2013, brought back the Christmas theme and a new tree. Now, every year has a new tree, so we'll just have to stop mentioning this, but yeah. We also got a new multi-target ability for the Inferno Tower, so it can now target a few troops at the same time, and also level 3 was added to that as well. So 2013 ended off as a pretty good year. 14 year old me was pretty happy. January 29th, 2014, heroes were given abilities. Prior to this update, heroes would only do one thing, and that's just attack, like with their sword or the Archer Queen's uh, crossbow. But in this update, they became much more hero-like by spawning archers and barbarians and having abilities like the Rage Spell and stuff like that. Also, clans got an update. Co-leaders were finally added as an actual thing. Why did it take it so long? I have no idea. On April 9th, this was the day that made Clash of Clans live up to its name, finally. And you guessed it, it was Clan Wars. This was a massive update, and I don't think it needs a whole lot of explaining. Clan Wars is pretty self-explanatory. May 16th, they added the ability to save war bases and also edit them. Along with other Clan War improvements and fixes, they also made Village Edit Mode available for Town Hall 3. On July 3rd, this was a huge balance update. Stat changes, graphical improvements, hero AI rework, and finally, live battle spectating, which was added to Clan Wars to watch players as they attack. Back in this update, this was like magic. Like, wow, you can see someone as they attack. That's crazy. The 16th of September, a new Dark Elixir troop was introduced, the Lava Hound. October 22nd, we got a new trap called the Skeleton Trap. You can now also upgrade walls with Elixir, which was pretty OP. It was so OP that like a month later, the walls needed to be a minimum of level 9 to be upgraded with elixir. So uh, yeah, it got nerfed. Multiple layouts were also added to village edit mode, so you can now save multiple layouts instead of just having one. The ability to watch live replays of your base getting attacked, which was really useful. Before this update, you kind of needed to wait for the enemy to finish destroying your base. Then you can get into your base and see what happened. So yeah, you can only imagine how useful this feature was. 2015 came along and on February 24th, clans now had levels. This made clans able to level up and earn perks that all clan members can benefit from. April 30th, a new defense was added, the Air Sweeper. July 1st, 2015, the Dark Spell Factory was added. This meant dark spells were also introduced. The Poison Spell, Earthquake, and Hay Spell. And finally, more leagues were added, Titan and Legend League. Moving on to September 9th, the main part of this update was a War Tiebreaker. The war tiebreaker was pretty much a way to calculate who really won the war. Aside from that though, 25 new walls for Town Hall 10 was added. December 10th, this update was massive. Well, yeah, every update that has a new Town Hall is big, okay? And you guessed it, it was Town Hall 11. With Town Hall 11, we got to see the Eagle Artillery, Grand Warden, extra defenses, new defense levels, New levels for pretty much everything, and this was also the update that was a bit controversial. People used to leave their town hall outside of the base so that people could attack them, take their town hall, and leave. Then that would result in them getting a shield, like a cheap shield. In this update though, that all changed. Guarding your town hall was the only choice, because now, if you left your town hall outside, it wouldn't grant you a shield. The enemy still had to get around 30% for you to get a shield. They also added 30 more seconds to the battle time because Town Hall 11 was a big base. So obviously you needed more time to finish your attack. 2016 was finally here and the loot cart was added. Treasury in the clan castle and star bonuses. But the loot cart was kind of broken. <laughs> Other than that, the Eagle Artillery was given the ability to deal three times more damage to golems. Rest in peace. March 21st, we got a new troop, the Bowler. There was also a ton of war changes, new troop levels, and a lot of new defense levels. May 24, friendly challenges were added. We also got two new troops, the Miner and the Baby Dragon, and two new spells, the Clone Spell and the Skeleton Spell. October 12th, we got a new defense from Clash Royale added over to Clash of Clans, which was the Bomb Tower. Town Hall 11 got 25 more walls, and friendly wars were added. And finally, we're at the last update of 2016. The 19th of December, we got the Christmas update, which introduced a new temporary troop, and for the first time, the Ice Wizard. Temporary troops were sort of a new thing back then, so 
Yeah. I probably won't mention all of them, so just keep in mind. Yeah. We also got the Freeze Trap and the Santa Surprise. Keep in mind though, this was all temporary. The first update of 2017 on the 16th of January was more or less a balancing update. We had new levels and stuff like that, but nothing huge. May 22nd, we got the biggest update in a while. The builder space was introduced with new defenses and okay, new everything. Also, we got a lot of cool stuff for the main village as well, like the multi-mortar and the archer towers having that fast or long range toggle. Yeah, uh, what's it called? There's a proper word for this. Gearing. June 27th, Builder Hall 6 was introduced, new troops like the Night Witch came, and new defenses were unlocked in the shop, like the Roaster. On September 27th, Builder Hall 7 came along, we got the new Giant Cannon and the new Dropship, Plan War improvements, and many more balance changes. Heading on to the 11th of October, you could now stalk who is online. Well, kind of. You can only do this with your friends. Friendly battles for the builder base, which was previously just for the home village, was added. And finally, a ton of rework for clan wars, more levels, and clan restrictions and more. And of course, we're now to the last update of 2017, which came on December 18th. We got a new feature called Clan Games, which is basically a new feature that would allow players in the clan to earn rewards. The first update of 2018 and the first of February was simply fireworks and a fortune tree that was added as a new obstacle. Now, in case you haven't noticed, I haven't mentioned every obstacle, but there is like a lot of them, okay? Like a lot of them. I just thought I mentioned that this update was primarily just for that. The 5th of March, this update was huge. Along with the new Builder Hall 8, we got the Mega Tesla, Super P.E.K.K.A., extra buildings, traps, the battle machine got five more levels, and for the home village, more new cool features like the trader. On the 11th of June, we got Town Hall 12. Yes, as you guessed, another huge update. Along with Town Hall 12, we got Siege Machines and the Siege Machine Workshop. So the Siege Machines at the time were the Wall Wrecker, the uh, Blimp, I, I think that's it. Also, we got the Electro Dragon, the ability to change your name multiple times with gems, clan improvements, and much much more. June 26th, we got a lot of upgrade times reduced. Uh, this has happened a lot throughout the years. If I don't mention it, it's probably because it wasn't listed in the uh, patch notes. But yeah, this has happened at least like three or four times the past nine years, I think. October 23rd, we got Clan War Leagues, which is great. I love the rewards. The game also had even faster upgrades, new tornado trap, potions, magic items, and more. I mean, there's just a lot to talk about. <laughs> of course, full links will be down below for the full patch notes. December 10th, which was the last update of 2018, we got a new troop, the Ice Golem, new bat spell, new stone hammer siege machine, a couple of new magic items, tons of new levels for buildings, and the rest of the update was primarily a lot of quality of life changes in the home village and the builder base. April 2nd, 2019, we got seasonal challenges. We also got clan war league changes, new levels, and tons of balance changes. This update wasn't really big, but it's just the combination of balance changes and quality of life changes that made it a good update. The 18th of June, we got Builder Hall 9. Along with Builder Hall 9 was new levels for it, of course, new buildings, new troops, and a new defense. As for the main village, though, we got new hero levels, magic items, practice mode, new Legend League matchmaking patterns, and a ton of bug fixes and balance changes. On the 16th of October, we got a new clan recruitment tool where you can search for new members to join your clan based on specific stats. And along with that, we got a new look to profiles, clan profiles, and some quality of life changes. The 9th of December, we had a pretty big update as well, Town Hall 13. With Town Hall 13, we got a few things, but let's mention the biggest additions like the Giga Tesla, Giga Inferno, a new hero called the World Champion, new defense, the Scattershot, a new siege machine, the Siege Barracks, we got a new troop, the Yeti, new levels for literally everything in the game, including walls, defenses, traps, buildings, heroes, spells, everything. Other than that, we got a ton of quality of life changes and balance changes, you know, the usual. The first two updates of 2020 were just balance changes and fixes, but on April 4th, we got the big spring update. Firstly, we got the new super troops. This was simply a beefy version of existing troops 
which was pretty badass. We got a lot of cost reductions throughout this update, a third Dark Elixir drill for Toho 9, and heading over to the Builder Base, there was now a tiebreaker for battles. Overall, this update was centered around the new super troops. June 22nd, we had a new Dark Elixir troop called the Headhunter available at Town Hall 12. We got some more new super troops, defense levels, troop levels, pretty much the same as the last update, just new levels throughout the entire game. One thing I loved about this update was the new addition of sceneries. It may not seem like a big deal, I mean it's just... It's just a background, right? But hey, after playing Clash of Clans for this long, it's very refreshing to get a new background, or as it's called, scenery. The rest of the update was fairly small, but some of the most notable changes were the loot cart now accumulated loot for 90 days, upgrading town halls would now trigger various boosts, and if you've been active for more than 90 days, it would now come back to tons of free upgrades. I mean, the villagers messed with your village and stuff like that yeah basically free stuff okay so now we're at the part where we left off last year jesus this game is old i'm scared to still be making these for their 20th anniversary oh god anyways on the 12th of october 2020 we got some new super troops the super valkyrie and the super minion we also got the return of a temporary troop the skeleton barrel new defense levels and tons i mean tons of quality of life changes. I could talk about this for like five minutes, but instead, two of the most notable changes were the removal of the super troop boost cooldown, so you can now boost as much as you like without waiting seven days in between. Also, an age verification for new accounts, which was of course confusing to some, but to sum it up, pretty much if you were under 16, you'd have some features locked and the clan you were in would have some extreme censorship. Overall, a very nice update for the fall of 2020. Now for December 7th and the 5th. Yes, it's two days because for some reason we had two updates for two different versions of Android. Whatever, anyways. In this update, we got the new Log Launcher Siege Machine, a new invisibility spell, two new super troops, the Super Wizard and the Ice Hound, and finally, a new magic item called the Super Potion. As usual, the rest of the update was a combination of new levels, new events, and a ton of balance changes. I feel like I have to mention that we also got the Cosmetics tab too, because I mean, that was pretty cool, right? So, uh, yeah, that was pretty much it for 2020. About a month later, on the 20th of January, 2021 we got some balance changes and then some more of that on the 22nd of february again on march 1st and then a smaller one on the 8th of march yeah nothing huge but i thought i mentioned that the first three or four updates of 2021 were just balance changes and small fixes then came the 12th of april 2021 the patch notes for this update are scarily long. Most of it wasn't truly important, but the big part of this update was of course Town Hall 14. So let's start there. Of course, the new Town Hall was added, Builder Huts were now weaponized, so you can now upgrade them and beef them up, who would have thought five years ago? And the Pet House, which is where you'd get the pets. Well, obviously. New levels for pretty much everything in the game, and aside from tons of balancing for Town Hall 14, we got new starter challenges and a starter pass for Town Halls 2 through 6 to help them speed up their progress. Like, what? Where was I when this happened? I didn't know this. We got tons of time and cost reductions for all Town Hall levels, new achievements, and just a lot more. Like, a lot. There's so much. Of course, none of it was huge, but if you want to read it all, I always encourage you guys to click the link down below for the full patch notes that starts from launch all the way to present time. The next four updates were balance changes and fixes, but finally on the 15th of June, we got more new levels for Town Hall 14 and two new troops. One of them was the Dragon Rider and the other was a new super troop called the Rocket Balloon. The rest of the update was fairly small additions, but some of the most coolest ones I can think of was an option to customize the deployment bar size to your liking, like that's cool as heck, ability to rotate bases, and army composition sharing. Unfortunately though, this is where the road ends. Yeah, that was a lot to talk about. 
We got some bug fixes a day after this update, but other than that, this is pretty much the entire update history of Clash of Clans. As of when this video was made, of course. The day I upload this, there probably will be some more cool stuff, but how would I know? As I previously stated, feel free to check out the full patch notes down below. It's a seriously long page, so if you're committed, grab some water, trust me it'll help. But it's been great reviewing the game's history once more this year, and it felt good to get my yearly dose of nostalgia. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. Have a good day out. Peace!